It was early 1945, and the Eastern Front was collapsing under the relentless Soviet advance. I was an SS soldier, stationed in Hungary, fighting to hold back the tide. The cold was bitter, and the ground was frozen solid, making every step a struggle. The once beautiful Hungarian countryside was now a battlefield, scarred by craters and littered with the remnants of war. Our orders were clear to defend the small village at all costs. It was a strategic point, crucial for delaying the Soviet forces and allowing our retreating units to regroup. We knew this would be a desperate fight, but we had no choice. As we fortified our positions, the sound of Soviet artillery grew louder. The ground shook with each explosion, and the air was thick with smoke and the smell of burning. The villagers had fled, leaving behind a ghost town. We used the empty buildings for cover, setting up machine gun nests and sniper positions. The attack came at dawn. The Soviets launched a massive assault, their tanks leading the charge. We opened fire, trying to halt their advance. The noise was deafening, the chatter of machine guns mixing with the roar of tank engines and the explosions of artillery shells. I crouched behind a wall, firing my rifle at the advancing enemy. My comrades were doing the same, each of us fighting for survival. The Soviets were relentless, their sheer numbers overwhelming our defenses. I saw men I had fought alongside for years fall around me, cut down by enemy fire. Despite our efforts, the Soviets kept coming. Their tanks smashed through our lines, and their infantry followed close behind. We fell back, retreating through the village, using the narrow streets to slow their advance. The fighting was brutal, hand to hand at times, as we struggled to hold our ground. We regrouped in the center of the village, making a last stand. The Soviets surrounded us, their superior numbers and firepower giving them the upper hand. We fought with everything we had, knowing that surrender was not an option. The air was filled with the sound of gunfire, shouts, and the cries of the wounded. As the day wore on, our ammunition dwindled and our casualties mounted. The Soviets pressed their attack and our defenses crumbled. We were forced to retreat again, this time into the surrounding woods. The cold bit at our faces, and the snow made every step difficult. In the chaos, I lost sight of my unit. I found myself alone, hiding in a thicket as the Soviets swept through the area. I could hear their voices, their footsteps crunching in the snow. I stayed still, barely daring to breathe, hoping they would pass by without noticing me. Eventually, the sounds of battle faded, and I ventured out of my hiding place. The village was lost, and our forces were in disarray. I made my way back to our lines, joining other stragglers who had managed to escape. We were defeated, but we knew the fight was far from over. The retreat continued, and we were pushed further west. The days that followed were a blur of cold, hunger, and constant movement. We fought skirmishes here and there, but it was clear that the war was nearing its end. The Soviet advance was unstoppable, and our once proud army was crumbling. Looking back, I remember the faces of my comrades, the fear and determination in their eyes. We had fought for our homeland, for our beliefs, but in the end, it was all for nothing. The war had taken everything from us, leaving behind only memories of battle and loss. As we continued our retreat, I wondered what the future held. The world we had known was gone replaced by uncertainty and despair. But we had no choice but to keep moving, to keep fighting, until the bitter end.